an epic night here on BTN as we mentioned the first time that number one and number two will meet in a regular season conference match in the Big Ten as Minnesota and Nebraska playing this historic night but they're focused on the outcome they want to get a win here heading into the postseason and going after a Big Ten title for both teams starting lineups tonight brought to you by Tachikara you look at the Huskers and you see Katie Rolfson we mentioned her as that star on the right side Wong Arantes Libero school record 35 digs in the first meeting between these two teams amazing and she's the energy give her give her on that team and you look at the Gophers and Samantha Seliger Swenson. What a phenomenal sophomore campaign for her. But Paige and Hannah Tapp, if the Gophers are going to pull off this upset win, the Tapp sisters have to come through. Look at the matchup between these two teams. The Huskers third in the nation in hitting percentage. Minnesota is fifth. You look, though, in the Big Ten Conference, Minnesota is the best hitting team in Big Ten matches alone. Great scene on hand in the sports pavilion. The Gopher faithful out to watch this Huge matchup between these two teams, and no surprise, they've been one of the best venues in the Big Ten Conference. And, of course, Nebraska bringing in their legion of fans that they have across any matchup in the Big Ten. But Huskers seeking their first Big Ten title since 2011. The first year they were a member of the Big Ten Conference, and John Cook in his 17th season, three-time national champion, including a season ago. Huskers trying to make it back-to-back -back national titles. And we'll get to Hugh McCutcheon in a moment as we are underway in set one between number one and number two. Holman with the first swing of the match and the kill for the Huskers. Right off the bat, three-point pass, right to Hunter, and kaboom, put it down by Holman. Brianna Holman, first year with Nebraska starting, actually getting playing time after sitting out a season ago. She said she came to play for the Huskers to play in matches like this one. Service there for the Huskers, and then you get a look at Hugh McCutcheon in his fifth season, led the Gophers to the Big Ten title last year, trying to make it back-to-back -back Big Ten titles. But Minnesota would have to win tonight and on Saturday against Wisconsin to get a share. They'd also need help with Nebraska losing to Michigan in the regular season. So a little bit of help for the Gophers, but off to a good start, keeping Nebraska out of system. Hart puts it away for the kill. Such a fast attacker, Hart. You'll see all night, folks. She takes that first step as soon as the setter gets the ball. So it's a really fast tempo out there, tough to defend against. Hart, the three-time Big Ten freshman of the week, coming off 20 kills, a season high against Michigan State last Friday. swing for Hart. Cross court, Wong Arantes with the dig. Third chance. Gophers keep it in play. Long rally early on between these two teams. Seliger Swenson lays out. Block is there for Nebraska and the stuff for the Huskers. Huge rally and I love it how they keep it in front of the 10 foot line. Even though her transition is not getting all the way back, Brianna Holman finds a way tip but on the second attack second chance block Nebraska leading the Big Ten in blocks per set during conference play second overall in the Big Ten out of system play for Minnesota but still terminating was Alexis Hart one of the things I want to know right up right off the bat because Mike you and I have so much to talk about and by the way happy Thanksgiving uh, before this match even gets going, there's just so much excitement surrounding this, but I really want people to take a note of who they're serving against. And right here, I think Minnesota's going to go after some of their DSs, kind of stay away from Juan Arantes. And on the other side, I really think Nebraska's going to attack Sarah Wilhite. time, Minnesota went after Kenzie Maloney, but still Nebraska put up a good set to Katie Rolfson for the kill. 
We'll keep an eye on the serving targets on both sides. Both coaches would tell you that this is just like any other match. You prepare the same way. You don't prepare any differently because it's number one versus number two with the Big Ten title at stake. Hart cross court, but it's out of play. And that's an out of system ball. Samantha had to go way back to deliver that set, and she's still trying to deliver a flat ball all the way out to Hart. So 12 of the last 13 have gone at least four sets. Three of the last four have gone to five sets. Tap can't put that ball away. And then out of the back row, here's Walson. Hart once more, but another attack air as cross board not working out here for Alexis Hart in the last two attempts. And she's so composed as a freshman, so don't worry about her. She's going to definitely get her kills. Right now, she's kind of feeling it out. She's going that hard cross court angle. When the set's inside and there's a double block, there's not a lot of space to hit him up. Hunter with the dump. Rosado got a piece of it to keep it in play. But then the roll shot out of bounds in Minnesota with some airs being an issue. Right off the bat, and if you can remember the last time these two teams played, that was a problem for Minnesota. They had quite a few airs. I believe 28 hitting airs last time they played. 4-0 run for the Huskers. Rolfson still back there on the service line. Creates the overpass, and it's an ace out of play as Rolfson coming through with good service, and Yuma Cutchins going to call an early timeout. He's definitely going to try to slow this down and stop the bleeding somehow. 7-3 lead for number one Nebraska on the road in set one. Volleyball on BTN is brought to you by Tachikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. And by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Great look at the sports pavilion filling up tonight. Right before Thanksgiving, but the Gopher fans are out to watch some of the best volleyball in all of the nation. And the Husker fans who traveled as well. Special night here in Minneapolis between these two teams. And Nebraska off to a great start, but Will Height out of the back row. And right out of the timeout as well. And you know, this, this is what the setter's going to do. They're going to find their go-to, and that's their Will Height from Minnesota. Maybe Katie Rolfson on the other side of the net. They're senior stars. Cook talked about the biggest thing coming into this match was the last time these two teams played, Nebraska let Minnesota back into some sets, gave them some chances that maybe they shouldn't have, and we saw that in set one when Nebraska had an 18-13 lead in the first meeting, and then Minnesota came back to win that set. You know that was the message from John Cook in that last time out. Don't let them come back, even though it's still early in this set. You have to keep the pressure on, and that starts right now from Annika Albright, tough server on the backcourt for Nebraska. Hunter, Amber Rolfson, the swing and the finish. And those slide hitters just glide. It's so fun to watch those middle attackers and right side hitters coming off one foot behind the setter. Service ah! there for Monica Albright. It's been one area that Nebraska has not excelled. It's been in the service airs. They dealt with some service air problems the first time these two teams met. But they're such a good serving team overall that they'll take some of those airs with the aggressive serve. Hart to serve for the Gophers. Yeah. Serve from her, but Hunter puts it up to Fecky who terminates. And Fecky had such a great uh, weekend against Iowa and Penn State. Really put up some big numbers as an outside hitter. Come a long way from last year. And even if you see the progress she's made, I think she was hitting around 260 maybe last year at this time. She's upped it even more and just such a strong outside hitter. Hitting 312 on the season, moving into that L1 spot after being in the L2 position a year ago. Seliger Swenson over to Will Hunt. And she's able to pass up the block. Will Height coming off her best performance in her career of 26 kills, 13 digs, hit over 300 in that five set win on Sunday against Michigan. Here's Holman. Block was there for the Gophers. <laughs> 
Wilhite tools off the block for the kill. And takes advantage of Kelly Hunter up there and Holman when that set is inside. And you're going right on to that block. If you notice right there with her left hand, Kelly Hunter wasn't facing inside the court. It was outside. Nice tool by Sarah Wilhite. Becky with the big swing down the line comes back over. Another chance for her. Rosado with the nice dig. Defense coming through for Minnesota. Now the chance for Salvador Swenson, who has the kill from the center spot. Always fun up there as a center to get those strong kills, but you have such a physical presence when you're up there at the net. And here you see Becky finding the seam, but Rosado is in there, and that's purposeful. So Rosado sticks herself right in the middle of the court where she's able to dig a nice ball. Down to a two-point margin, and Hunter has to run this ball down. Becky, though, with another kill for the Huskers. Last year's NCAA tournament, most outstanding player, second on the team in kills this year. And first time these two teams met, she had a season high of 20 kills. She talks about loving to play on the big stage and the biggest matches, and she certainly has come through in her career during those times. She has, and you notice uh, tonight, all these pin hitters, they are exceptional, and they're, they vary in little parts from each other. Becky has a nice high snap. She's able to see the court in front of her. She does a nice job of swinging deep, but when she sees the hole, she puts it straight down. Shaw was there off that swing from Holman, and then the Gophers come through in transition. In transition, you said it, Mike. I mean, their defensive transition, they're able to swing off of those digs, and you saw Shaw put her hands up. They're able to make plays on those balls that you would normally see hit the ground. And if you're Nebraska, you have to transition off the net fast to play some good defense. Six seniors on this Minnesota team, an experienced group, playing their last two regular season home matches here at the Sports Pavilion this week. There's Nebraska, senior lady team as well. Wilhite ends the rally. And she's got that long arm, too. I hear the coverage talking to her, and that's what great teammates can do. You see Alyssa Gaynor with her hands open, her palms up, ready to cover the ball. But she's also telling Sarah Wilhite what's open, what's available for her to swing at. Phenomenal senior campaign for Sarah Wilhite, three-time Big Ten Player of the Week, second in the conference in kills per set. And then Nebraska, out of system ball, still gets the kill. Wow, and that is really impressive. You have to wait an awful long time if you're Katie Rolfson to find that ball coming over your right side shoulder. The patience it takes. You want to be able to take off fast when you see it, but you have to really hold yourself and keep that ball in front of you. Loman into the match, and she terminates for Minnesota. And Loman is somebody they need to get going here for Minnesota. Ten kills last time they played against each other. She is just so strong and has come such a long way. Really stepped it up in all categories. But I love the spacing between her in the net and her and her setter, Samantha. Molly Loman, the junior out of Mankato, Minnesota. Seen a bigger role offensively this season. And also she's leading this team in blocks. Almost had another. Hart with a tip. Maloney lays out for the Huskers. Wilhite again out of the back row. Hunter keeps it in play. Big swing and finish from Paige Tapp. Huge swing for Paige Tapp. And we haven't even talked about this, how the Tapp sisters have switched up their roles right here. You see Paige looking over his shoulder again, being patient on the opposite side. A nice assist from Rosado. Down to a one-point margin. The Gophers back in it in the first. First set between number one Nebraska and number two Minnesota. 13-12 lead for the Huskers. These two teams, you see what they 
Nets. Twin sister combos have done over the course of their meetings in their careers. And you see, it's been in favor of Nebraska and the Ralston twins as they have won three of the four meetings. But a year ago in Lincoln, it was Minnesota coming away with a victory. And it's so difficult to get a win in the Devaney Center in front of that 8,000 plus fans. And that was a moment actually where Nebraska took a step back and tried to regroup after losing back-to-back -back matches to Minnesota and Wisconsin. And from that point on, they went on to the national title out of that timeout a kill for Katie Rolfson. But these twin sister combos, it seems like it should be rare, but in the Big Ten Conference, it always seems like we have these family connections. It does. You know, I've talked before about maybe the sibling and the sister connections, and we've talked often times about the parents and how they play collegiate ball at some point. But this is that was a that's a great story with those seniors coming in together and battling throughout their whole careers. Tip is put back down by the Huskers and a good response after the run by Minnesota to open up a three-point lead. Let's take another look. Well, you got the Twin Towers up there, Katie and Amber, and Amber is a blocking threat up there. She's done such a nice job for the program, making that switch to middle attacker, middle blocker for Nebraska. Move for both Katie and Amber. Amber moving from the right side into the middle, Katie from the left side to the right side paid off paid off a year ago and you talked about that season for nebraska all the expectations for the 2013 class for the huskers that was ranked number one in the nation coming out of high school and really fulfilling those expectations with the championship a year ago and could go beyond them if they were to win it this season hart looking to the back corner and a nice move by the freshman on the tip to the back corner. and it all starts from the serving line you, you see they're, they are Maloney, but look at this set from Samantha Seliger Swenson. She does such a nice job on those tight balls, and you'll see her all night long manipulating her hand so the ball comes off clean, and she's still able to give her hitters the best set possible. Once again, she somehow puts up a great set. And she is just so impressive, and we talked to Hugh earlier this week about her and and how hard she's worked on the court. She's got in the weight room. She's got a lot stronger. And that is not easy, folks, to get down on your knees and deliver a good ball. You have to have a lot of court awareness, awareness and a lot of strength. Over fans trying to say that didn't come off the net and touch a Minnesota player, but we play on. The swing from Katie Rolfson will end the rally. And there is the replay option if Hugh McCutcheon wants to go to it, and I believe he has grabbed the green card. He does have it in his right hand, and we will take a look and see if during that last rally, it came off a gopher player or if it just stayed on Nebraska's side as it went into the tape. So, our first replay of the night. A lot of times the players will know, and they'll go over to the bench and let their coaches know. So they're not going to waste that green card opportunity. But again, there's no penalty for the green card. You're Michael. not charged a timeout if you call for a challenge and it goes against you. So no reason not to take a look. Now, you can see that it did go into the tape, but did it touch a gopher fingertip as it rolled across the tape? I don't think so. And from the first shot that we saw it, I, I would say no way. But... They're going to look at it. It looks like almost like it was a delayed block coming over. It didn't even have a chance. They are looking for something definitive in the replay to see if there's something they can know Are you for saying sure. that I'm not definitive? Well, as we look at it, it does not look like there's a touch off a Minnesota player, but can you be 100% sure? No. What is 100% these days? <laughs> well, if it was clearly wide and had about a six to inch to a foot in between the fingertip and the ball, but most of the time these are quite close at the net. And... Well, this is why they have the replay. They want to get the call right, and here we are. It's a one-point game. Looked like 
on the last one, it seemed pretty clear that the ball did not touch. And even right there, too, it didn't look. It, the tape can really take the pressure of the ball and really send it down. So I'm surprised they haven't ruled it already. Explaining over at the scores table, and we'll get their decision. And it is four touches on Nebraska, the point to Minnesota. And the Gophers lead for the first time since it was 3 2 in this first set. It's a good decision to go for the challenge, and it pays off for the Gophers. Minnesota and Nebraska both had the challenge review system a year ago. Side of Wisconsin. Now we've seen it expand throughout the Big Ten. It will be part of the NCAA tournament this year as we get that going next week. Art plays it as it comes back off the block. And then off the block and down the kill for Tap. Wow, how about that assist for Paige Tap back there? Not only is she serving a good ball, but she's playing that left side defense. She's doing a nice job as a role player in the backcourt. Bump set from Wangarantas. Malloy cross court. This is the first time we've talked about Malloy up there on the left side. Strong attacker. Double transfer right to Nebraska, but one of the things that Cook said about her is just seamless. It's like she's been there the whole time in Nebraska, and she's really, this is her first year, and she's a senior. She'll be graduating and celebrating senior night this weekend at Nebraska. Well, has led the Huskers and kills each of the last two matches, but another tough serve from Nebraska. Just when Minnesota had opened up a small margin, it's back tied at 17. You just cannot let up at all, especially on the ball control. You have to make the ball playable. That first contact is so important on both sides of the net. Not a good first contact for Minnesota. Malloy again. The dig from Rosado comes back over, and then Malloy puts it away. One of the things you can do is panic on those balls when it's a fast point opportunity, maybe a 50-50 ball, and Malloy goes up there. Great dig by Rosado. You see Samantha, she's in the backcourt, so she's not able to touch it, turn, or block. Nice pass for the Gophers, leads to a good kill from Hannah Tapp. And that's what it does, and Hannah Tapp is in there for that reason, to go behind the setter. Her stats have shown so well in the backside behind the setter as she goes off one foot and that's why Hugh was able to make that adjustment to, between the Tap sisters, switch up Paige and Hannah. And back to that first contact off a very difficult serve. Minnesota was able to get up a good pass. Malloy again. Really fast tempo out to the left side pin for Malloy and I really like her transition off the net. She's taking that big spike of post. She can see the whole court in front of her. Boy had that big night on the road at Penn State, the five-set win when she had a season high 19 kills. Here's Hart for Minnesota. And a tap with the tip. Nebraska somehow keeps it alive. And tap again. The smart by Minnesota going back to that corner, back to back. Tough for Nebraska. It was a great defensive move. But look at Kelly Hunter doing that dynamic move and really pushing over. And then here you see Hannah Tapp taking that big swing, deep line. Seventh tie of the first set. And this has been as advertised for number one and number two thus far. Saki with the big swing and tough one there for Hart to try to dig up. Really tough. And Alexis Hart is not normally back there for long periods of time defensively. But I know Coach McCutcheon, he's been talking about training her and getting her to compete and be on the court longer as a six-rotation player. So look for her and uh, her long career ahead of her to be back there.
Townsend comes in to serve and potentially a key service there, especially as we come down to the end of this first set. And that's her role. She's got to go back there and she's got to deliver a good ball. You know, she doesn't get those opportunities all the time to show her stuff, but she's, she's got to make sure she, she it's got to count. Four service errors in the first set for Nebraska. Huskers go back to Fecky. You see Minnesota's defense are really scrunched in more towards the middle of the court, more towards the right side of the court. So they're doing a good job. Minnesota trying to get that double block on Fecky, but she's just finding the edges, and she's able to score all the way around the perimeter. So Lucas Winston takes her own attack on two. Good coverage there from Wilhite. Page tap. The block was there for Nebraska, but Rosado kept it off the floor. Wilson, great defensive effort from the Gophers. Nebraska trying to end the rally. Another pancake. Chance for Minnesota. Hulbright via. Hunter couldn't play it off the net, and the long rally goes to the Gophers. Wow, that is some great volleyball action defensively. I love the smiles on the faces, too, as they dig these balls. And who's going to put this ball away? Where's this point going to end? A slew of great rallies in this first set. It's a fun night, and we're only just beginning. Holman, that hammer. It was thunderous. And she kept the ball in front of her and really packed some heat on that ball. She saw the open court, one-on-one -on -one opportunity right there against Lohman. Excuse me, right in the scene. Thank you. It's a tough serve. and Nebraska two points away from taking the first set. I love how Katie Robson is really extending her arm and putting some high snap on this right side attack. And again, she's seeing the whole court. She looks like she's hitting line and she adds a little bit of spin to it so it goes more towards the middle of the court. This, there's been talk all week about this being a Final Four preview type of match, a national semifinal, national championship. Think about the NCAA tournament coming up. The Big Ten has had the number one, number two, and number three team on a regular basis throughout this year in the ABCA poll. And potentially, you think about the runs that could be made. Could we see another all Big Ten national championship match like we saw between Penn State and Wisconsin a few years ago. That's down the road, but this is certainly the level of play we expect in the final weekend of the season in the NCAA tournament. Well, these two teams have known that the storybook, uh, the, the stories between these two teams have been quite spectacular, not only in these long rallies that we've seen this first set, but we've also seen some big time action in the past couple of years. We saw a great one earlier this year in Lincoln, Nebraska. Speaking of five setters, these, te these two teams seem to play consistently five set matches. Eight of the last 13 have gone five sets, including this one earlier in Lincoln. And in the fifth, it was Nebraska that was dominant and thanks to the defensive effort of Justine wong Arantes with her school record of 35 digs. She is now the all-time leader in career digs at Nebraska, passing Caleb Anworth. And John Cook talked about that was just an incredible accomplishment for her to pass that mark. But she's not just getting it done with her defense, she's getting it done with her leadership as well. Yes, and, and she does it all for this team as a senior. But Juan Aranta, she's got some big dreams ahead of her. She beat up Kayla Banworth on her, uh, you know, record-setting digs. But and it's something she sees herself in the future, maybe being a part of the Olympic team, definitely going to train with them, and maybe further down the road being a coach someday. Malloy chases this ball down. Free ball opportunity for the Gophers. They go back to Will Hike. There's Wong Arantis. At the net. Gophers again somehow keep it in play, but then a whistle for contacts on Minnesota. 
Okay, I just saw a bunch of things happening in that, <laughs> that last rally. I saw maybe four contacts, kind of missed opportunities. A ball control that went, went haywire. And Rosado just flew underneath the net, so. Nonetheless, it is set point for Nebraska in the first. An ace to end the first set from Michaela Becky. And a back and forth first set goes to the Huskers. A five to one finish for Nebraska in the first. As they take the early lead in this match between number one and number two. Huskers on top in the sports pavilion. out at home probably like the rest of you but i've learned a lot about wood floors tonight we got batting cage challenge <laughs> as you can see the monopoly board is set up with a lot of hotels i'm gonna make the pancakes grace is gonna make the the eggs you two are going to love the cookies just gonna check on the homeschool crew and make sure everything's going okay here Stay strong, parents. We're going to get this done. All we can control is right now and trying to maximize our days the best we can. I'm just so grateful for family, for friends, for loved ones, and the Big Ten. Be a coach. Be a teammate. Be a friend. Be a teacher. Be a family. family. We are a team. We are a team. We are a family. We got this. We got this. We can do this. We can do this. Who needs number two and number three on Saturday? We've got number one and number two on Wednesday night volleyball. Great first set presented by Tachikara. Nebraska wins at 25-21. Time now for the State Farm State of Success and the dominance of the Big Ten Conference. You look at where they have been in the polls over the past oh, over a decade now. And the success is the team's ranked in the top ten, ranked number one. And, of course, it's been traded amongst Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin this season. Think back to 2003. What happened in 2003 if there wasn't was a Big Ten team in the top ten? Yeah, that's unusual. The fans aren't used to that at all. This has been a banner year for the conference. Every year you think it can't get any better in the Big Ten, and then the league one-ups itself. You start thinking about how many teams might get in the NCAA tournament. You could say that 11 teams actually have an argument to be in. Likely the Big Ten would not get 11, but maybe nine again. And at the top of that, you have three teams that could definitely be in the national semifinals, if not national championship. And that doesn't even count the Penn State team that has won seven national titles. Just think about it. You're right. Uh, the, these Midwest Final Fours, pretty big. All the goals, everything points to Columbus. That's where everyone's headed for the national championship. Ohio State, they'll be in the NCAA tournament, they hope, and they'd love to play in the national semifinal at home. Start of the second set, another service error, the fifth service error of the match for Nebraska, but they also had four aces in that first set. Nebraska hits over 260, Minnesota just 160. The Huskers have held their last 11 opponents under 180 as a hitting percentage. There's Katie Rolfson swinging from the left side this time. All five kills for Katie Rolfson. And again, doing a nice job. She, they really kind of put a stop to her last time they played each other. They contained her. And that's what you need to do in order to win. But Katie Rolfson is one of those players who will just find a way to show her stuff. Becky was the one who had the service run at the end of the first set. She can get another chance at the service line. Will Height. Long Arantes the dip. Malloy, but that one won't get over in the points of Minnesota. Out of system play. you got to wait a long time for Annie Malloy to make good contact. And again, you have to make sure that you're back there. Hard transition play. Take those fast steps to the ball. You don't want to slow down. Just like the pace of the ball, you want to make sure you accelerate. Service there from Will Height. As we've talked about what is at stake tonight, we also think about some lengthy streaks that are on the line. Minnesota has won their last 30 straight home matches. That dates back to 2014, which actually was the last time they had a loss here, was against Nebraska in a five set match. And then the Oscars, they've won 14 in a row, including 17 straight road matches. And both of these teams. 
Minnesota unbeaten at home this season as part of that streak, and Nebraska unbeaten on the road. Well, the fans surely expect a win. I mean, <laughs> what, what's going to happen if they end up losing? Well, they'll both still be in great position going into the tournament, but there's been some impressive streaks for both of these teams. Amber Rolson from the middle. Nice high attack right there, making sure she's got space to swing and see the court. Great pass by Kenzie Maloney, and Kelly Hunter just does a nice job delivering the ball, and oftentimes it's not uh, the set play, it's how she delivers it, which, which is most important for a setter. And it's half of the off-speed, nice pancake there from Kenzie Maloney. Tap again cross-court, but the air. No, they're going to say that there was a touch off a of hustle. Off a of one foot for Hannah ta Tap. Here you go. Nice reach up there by Kenzie Maloney to stretch out and keep that ball alive for her teammates. Great defensive play. Will we have a challenge from Nebraska? It appears we will as John Cook reluctantly reached for the green card. Certainly, he's not happy, though, with that last call. First challenge for the Huskers. Minnesota won their first challenge in set one. But again, win or lose, it does not cost either team. I'm looking right now at the coaching staffs. Here you see Hugh McCutcheon taking advantage of this opportunity to talk to his team about what's going on, maybe the rotations, you know, who you're going to be up against next, what are, what's going to happen next. And there you see John Cook on the other side, you know, surely disappointed about the play called. But Chris Thomas, his his assistant coach is taking care of business, gathering the team up, and figuring it out. Again, looking for a definitive view. This might be the best angle. Now, is there a change of direction on the ball? That could be something to look for as well as it comes across. to tell. Hard to tell, and they'll... There is no touch. So the challenge from Nebraska does not work out for the Huskers, and... The point remains for... Well, it was out of bounds, so there was no touch, so Nebraska's got the ball. Responds for Minnesota after a long wait. And she loves hitting a quick out of that rotation. Perfect pass. She goes up strong. Mostly against one on one opportunities. So she's got both sides of the court to swing into. Malloy the swing. And that'll go down for Nebraska. And she's got the touch on that one. for those high hands, deep snap. And she's always got that smile on her face, always. And that's such a great uh, senior characteristic about all these players, as how happy maybe how grateful they are, especially somebody like Andy Malloy. Happy to be on this team. Dig there by Wong Arantes. Albright will swing. <laughs> Becky off the hands. The rally continues. Hart, another dig by Wong Arantes. She gets it done, even through that long rally, working really hard. Not easy to do as a middle attacker. She's going back to the middle of the court to block and has to swing all the way around for the right side attack. Becky again for 
Nebraska. It was a lower tempo. It didn't get, give her a chance to get all the way out there to give a double block. And here you see this nice dig action by Annika. Three-point dig. Opportunity to get that ball all the way out to the antenna for Fecky. Five kills now for Fecky. Fecky and Katie Rolfson both five kills and zero errors in the match thus far. Townsend, another service error. That's twice now we've seen her sub in, but certainly she has made her points on the service line throughout her time this season. That John Cook will count on her to go back in and right the ship. And that's what the coaching decisions are very interesting as they move along the match. Is he going to keep her in there, or is he going to give somebody else a chance? Holman can't keep that one in play, and Minnesota has the 7-6 lead. Yeah, that didn't look as smooth. Holman is all the way stacked left right here on the serve receive, so she's got to move all the way around the court behind the setter to hit that slide. They go back to Holman. And that was a nice pass, a perfect set for her. A little kick on the end. She's got a nice jump and those long arms, so she needs something on the end of it to really reach high, really extends, runs after the ball like a basketball layup, jumps hard off that left foot. Seliger swings in with her own attack. And she needs to be an attacker up there. She had seven kills the other night, and that was huge for somebody like her that she tr traditionally doesn't get as many kills. She gets a lot of double-doubles, a lot of digs, a lot of assists, but her attacks are not stacking up as much, and she needs to act like a big attacker up there against the breast of block. Bump set comes over to Wilhite off the hands of the Husker block. Holman will terminate despite the pursuit of the Gophers. And she's coming alive in the front court. Did a nice job against them last time they played. Really stellar job. And she's got a triple block on her, so she's finding ways to score. Speaking of that performance, the first time these two teams met, season high, 17 kills, hit 410 blocks. Her best performance in a Husker uniform for Brianna Holman. But the service errors continuing to plague Nebraska. Well, right now on the season, I think I read this correctly, Mike, is that they have 174 serving errors. And if you compare that to Minnesota, Minnesota has 89. But what I said, you know, makes up in the that department is Nebraska will get, deliver a good ball. So a ball like that, Kenzie Maloney saved. However, it was another hitting error for Nebraska. That one from Malloy. They have been low air so far in this match. It's just their fourth attack air of the night. Hunter goes back to Malloy. Will hide out of the back row, but there's an error from the Gophers. Both teams are trying to stay away from the block. It's intentional. That's why you see him hitting a lot of balls out of bounds. I often say you want to you give the block a chance. Try to go after it high hand. See what they can do. Hunter can't dig that ball up as it pinballs around. And Paige Tapp has another point for Minnesota. Pretty amazing to even just get a touch on that attack. It's coming with a lot of heat. She really swings up, goes sharp. I mean, that ball was hit around the 10-foot line. That's a nice, sharp angle. Into the net, though, from Tapp and a service there. Talk about the Gophers coming off two wins at home in five sets against Michigan State and Michigan. Certainly, you think about the end of the Big Ten season, especially when you add in some five-setters. Fatigue can certainly play a factor in some of the mistakes that we've seen in the second set. Well, the amount of attempts that the outside hitters are getting is huge, and Minnesota had a lot of attempts. There will have 68 attempts against Michigan. That's a lot of jumping. A smart decision by Samantha Seliger Swenson. We talked about her seven kills against Michigan, adding to her total. She's got three tonight. 14 assists and 12 digs. Another double-double already for Samantha Seliger-Swenson, her 11th on the year. 
almost an ace for Minnesota. Katie Ralston almost re wasn't ready to send over that free ball. And Hannah Tapp comes back and Gophers add to their total up 13 to 10. And just a lot of miscommunication. And this game is such a game of rhythm. So you'll see Nebraska really faltering maybe on the ball control miscommunication. Minnesota capitalizes and they speed it up and their tempo is so great on the pins. First three-point lead of the night for Minnesota. And they lead the second set in the sports pavilion. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, Discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities. Discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Live look in on BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Wisconsin in the fourth set trying to win the match at home before they play these Gophers in the Sports Pavilion on Saturday. And though we just saw Romana Krishkova helped off the court, she did slip during the last rally and appeared to be favoring her leg. Hope that she is okay. And Wisconsin looking to stay one match behind Nebraska with this win potentially against Iowa as Hart goes off the Nebraska block and extends the Minnesota lead. It's nice to see some action out of Hart. I think she was slowing down a bit. She was hitting zero after the first set, so a little tentative there. I think she just needs to build up a little bit more confidence to find some of those kills. Another chance for Malloy. Again, the coverage coming through for the Huskers. Third time, that one won't go, and it's a 15 to 10 lead. Here we see a dynamic move by both Seliger Swenson and Hannah Tapp doing a nice job, very disciplined. They're taking away space on the court. They're forcing the hitter to hit around them, therefore created an error for Malloy. Tip from Amber Rolson and a smart play from her gets the point and ends the run. It was a 4 0 run for Minnesota. Now it's 7 3 overall run for the Gophers. Just a nice job. Just stop the bleeding somehow. Finds an area on the court. Tough ball to dig. It is right over that left side blocker. Something maybe the left side blocker needs to take next time. Katie Rolfson will set over to Becky off the block and down. And an assist for Katie Rolfson. And just tooling the block, and that's huge, especially against a setter that gets like half of half of a block per set in the matches. But they get some good touches up there. You'll see Becky just taking advantage of Tap and Swenson for the tool. And a tap is stuffed by Becky. Official indicating that Nebraska with the point. Gophers go back to tap. Hart puts the heat on that ball. And was able to do it because Rosado in the right position and they're making good choices for Minnesota. They're digging the ball. She's selecting herself outside of Hannah Tapp's left arm to deliver a nice ball and that transition play is so lethal for Minnesota. Six kills to now lead the Gophers for Hart. Becky, the power from her. And she answers. She does have a lot of power as an inside set. She finds a little seam action to go after. She's got a lot of power in those bent arm swing. And she's got that very serious look on her face. Mike, she wants to get some more kills up there, but ultimately this is a team sport and they work so hard. They train well together and everything they do, they're in system, this Nebraska team. Will hide off the block and down. Nice 
tool off the block for Sarah Wilhite. Again, they're, they're using that block up there. Kind of in the beginning of the set, they were going around the block, maybe testing it and seeing where the, the perimeter and the edges were. And here they're doing a nice job of finding those hands. First kill of the second set for Sarah Wilhite. They need her production to be at its usual level to get this win. Becky, that one out of play. That's her first air, and a good move to dodge out of the way that one by the Gophers. Once it was a smart call, good court awareness. Eighteen, fourteen, Minnesota in the second set. Back to Becky, nice up there by Katie Shaw. Another chance for Fecky, and she'll put that one down. We got Maddie Beal in there. She's a sub for the setter as a blocking sub. So she does a nice job of getting to the pin, but not lining up on the ball, doesn't take the charge. They like to funnel the ball into their libero position. Overpass the kill for Holman. You can't get that ball anywhere near Holman up at the, up at the net. She's going to take advantage of that fast point right there. High snap, finding the court. Go for Faithful trying to will on Minnesota as it's down to a two-point second set. Page tap off the block. They're doing a nice job of using the right side pin. They're scoring an awful lot off the one foot against Nebraska's left side blockers. Sager Swenson to serve. Bump set. Block was there for Nebraska. Good coverage by the Gophers, but a second block opportunity. And Fecky and Holman combined. Yeah, you know, she didn't have to go anywhere. She was right there, read it well. She was in system, did a little bit of dynamic move, and pressed really hard. Hip to hip. Good signature dynamic move blocking on both of their parts. Four team blocks for Nebraska, zero for Minnesota. Oscars have been the best blocking team in the Big Ten Conference during conference play. A great one handed get by Fecky. Long Arantes, the, uh, the net. Rosado gets to it. Great defense on both sides. Free ball chance for Nebraska. Malloy doesn't get it over, and the point for the Gophers. Low contact point for Andy Malloy, but it was great hits on the other side for Minnesota. Just hanging tough. Some blocks and coverage opportunities, just finding a way to get the ball over the net. Waiting for Nebraska to make that error. Holman, almost the first block of the night for the Gophers. That one looked like it was going to go out. Hart, though, comes through. How about Samantha Seliger Swenson staying out of the net, being able to deliver a nice ball all the way out to the pin. Gophers with the four-point lead trying to even up this match at one set apiece. Minnesota leading in the second set, 21 to 17. Alexis Hart has come alive in the second set. Seven kills for her on the night, the majority of it coming here in the second. Well, she's really finding her stride. She's stroking it cross court in the seam and doing a nice job of finding that deep line shot. She's got a little bit more confidence now, so watch out. Hart, the freshman who has stepped in, taken over that spot. Dolly Santana left open, not in the same role, but really the only major change from this team that went to the national semifinals, won the Big Ten title last year, is in the form of Alexis Hart, and she has been vital throughout the 2016 campaign. Holman with the big swing. Big swing, big space to work with, great pass. Kelly Hunter does a nice job of delivering the perfect ball for her middle attackers, and it takes a lot of work for that to happen. It's not easy, doesn't come overnight, but Brianna does a nice job of just piking up 
and pulling through and finding the court. Coleman with six kills, two blocks thus far. Hart, and a mistake there from the freshman, and it's down to another two-point set. And in the beginning of the year, she struggled with out-of-system plays. She's that fast go-getter, first temple kind of a kid. Came from a club program where she was a middle attacker. So for off-speed off shots, maybe balls that are out of her system, she struggled with in the beginning. But I've really seen her come around. Well, we talk about the freshman impact in Alexis Hart, but the seniors for Minnesota, and you think of this six-senior class for the Gophers, Well, we're going to go and take a look now at the clinching scenarios for Nebraska, Wisconsin, and Minnesota as the Huskers, they just get a win tonight and they get a share at least. They win the next two. They will be the outright Big Ten champions. Wisconsin win the final two and have a Nebraska loss to be able to get a share. And Nebraska would need to lose both matches and Wisconsin would need to win the final two. Whereas Minnesota has to win both matches against the top two of the top three teams and then get a little bit of help from Michigan in the regular season finale against Nebraska for them to even get a share of the Big Ten. Team. There's a lot of math involved, a little too much for me. And what, <laughs> as a former coach, I'm going to look at it one game at a time, take care of the ball on your side of the net. And that's exactly what these two coaches are telling their team right now. Don't think about the future. Don't think about the next set. Think about the here and now and how are we going to get this done? How are we going to win this set? Push to 25. You only have a few more points. Let's keep the pressure on. Nebraska took the first set 25-21. It's a 21-19 lead for Minnesota in the second. They had a tight first set at about this point, and then Nebraska went on a run on the serve of Michaela Fecky. It's Justin Wangaranta serving for the Huskers. Serve from her, Paige Tap though. Malloy off the bump set. Nice assist. And she got that first step right to the ball. Very important for that first tempo and got on top of it. You notice here, Kenza Maloney did a nice job of delivering that ball. Nice kill by Malloy. Out of system and out of play were tied. Just like that. Out of that timeout, two points, boom. Ninth tie of the set. Minnesota has led by as many as five in this second set. Bowman, almost the block there for Nebraska. Nice dig by Wong Arantis. And the stuff for the Gophers. Huge block for Minnesota, just being in the right place at the right time. Molly Lohman really reading. Nice dig on the other side, but Alexis Hart lining up correctly. Lohman finishing it towards the inside of the court. First block of the night for Minnesota at a critical moment. with the tip. She goes back to her, gets a full swing on it this time. The block for the Huskers, and we're tied again. We're seeing some great blocks up here. Not only are they slowing the ball down during some transition work, but here in the end, you see Amber really pressing in. She may be late. It looks like she's going to be late, but she's really watching the ball and seeing where she needs to put it with her hands. Malloy, almost first straight for Hawk. Both teams, and then Malloy comes through, and Nebraska has the lead. And scrapping her way there, and Kelly Hunter doing a nice job of delivering a good ball. Loman stays in it for the block, but Malloy ends up finishing it again, just finding those arms, those elbows up there to tool. Six to one run by Nebraska. Huskers are two points away from taking a 2-0 lead in this match, but nothing has been easy for either team tonight. It has been a great one thus far. 
exactly what we expected from number one versus number two. But look at this Nebraska team and you talk about what eluded them a year ago. They did not win the Big Ten title, but the bigger goal was the national championship. They won the national title. But this year, this senior class can get that Big Ten crown that they have not gotten at any point in their four years in Lincoln. And then potentially could add to it with back-to-back -back national titles, which would be the first time in Nebraska volleyball history. And that would leave a mark. Obviously, they've already left a very big mark on this program, but to do something that has never been done in the history of this program, which has such a long and storied history, would mean so much to these seniors. I can't believe that this group has never won a Big Ten championship with all the talent that they have. And, and you know, Mike, it is really important for all these teams in the Big Ten to win that conference championship. All of them set their sights high on that goal. Well, volleyball returns Saturday night. Gophers hosting Wisconsin, and that cover starts at 8.30 Eastern, presented by Tachikara. And the weekly awards, you look at Haggerty and Lauren Carlini, as Wisconsin was closing in in a four-set victory over Iowa at home. So Minnesota getting to play number one and number three in the final two matches of the regular season. But here, the close of the second set. Gophers go to tap, but the block! Point Nebraska. And they read that well out of the timeout. They knew they were going to go to Hannah Tap off that one foot takeoff. And look at Malloy. It was almost like a black solo for her. Hart. Justine Wong Arantis, another up. But that's going to do it. Nebraska comes back from the deficit to win the second set, 25-22. A 7-1 run for the Huskers, and they lead this match two sets to zero. I think it was a lot of payback from the last time that they played Minnesota in that first set. Minnesota was down big and came back to win something that they emphasize in the Nebraska program, never give up on the set. Oscar fans who made the trip are happy so far, but Minnesota isn't going anywhere. Number one and number two, number one's up 2-0 at the intermission. We'll come back in a moment. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Intermission between number one Nebraska and number two Minnesota. The Huskers with the 2-0 lead in the sports pavilion in Minneapolis. And a year ago in the NCAA tournament for these two teams, some impressive runs. Minnesota making it to the final four, the fourth time in program history and a Big Ten title. And then Nebraska with the run that they went on to win the national championship for the fourth time in program history. Following those two losses to Minnesota and Wisconsin, they won out the rest of the year and celebrated the national title. Mike Wolf alongside Liz Tortorello, Nelson, and Liz, you think about how much talent there is in the Big Ten. Number one, two, and three throughout the entire year. All of the quality teams throughout the conference. Will a Big Ten team be hoisting the trophy once again in December, this time in Columbus? Well, I sure hope so. I mean, <laughs> this is great volleyball, and you're not going to get any better than this. Right now, one, two, three, you said it all. Tops in all the polls all year round. So they're destined. Somebody's destined to bring that trophy home. Well, how many teams are going to get in, Liz? That's the question. You think potentially could 11, but here you see Purdue with the 22 RPI. They may not have as many overall wins as Iowa, but Purdue, you would think, would be in with that good of an RPI. Iowa, even if they get a victory to end the regular season and get to 20 wins, their RPI is so low, you don't know. Indiana, a little bit above them. 
Iowa's record, though, in the Big Ten Conference, now 9 and 10. Nine wick victories in the best conference in the nation. You'd think that would mean the Hawkeyes would get in, but you could see nine, maybe 11 teams get in the, in the NCAA tournament from the Big Ten. Well, I hope Iowa gets in. That would be awesome for a program like that who's been struggling in the past and maybe hasn't made their way. And right now, that would be a statement for Iowa volleyball. But I also look at teams like Michigan, Illinois, those teams kind of hovering around that, that midway point. What's going to happen to them? and everyone loves the Big Ten, but does the selection committee love the Big Ten? <laughs> well, we'll see how that all plays out. Happy yours. Happy Thanksgiving. From our family to yours, the Gophers wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Through two sets between number one and number two, Nebraska out blocking Minnesota, out doing, doing them in service aces as well, and then the hitting percentage also in favor of the Huskers. Be sure to enjoy BTN's new late night show, Sports Light with Mike Hall. Join Mike each Wednesday at 11 Eastern. All new Sports Light tonight after we're done here in the Sports Pavilion. Be sure to tune in following the conclusion of our match. Two sets in the books, and they go to the Huskers. Minnesota will try to regroup out of the intermission. Nebraska, though, they are one set away from a share of the Big Ten title for the first time since 2011. And you know they want to put this match away and win on Saturday to get the outright Big Ten title. That's a huge goal for them, and you'd be a fool to think that they're not thinking about that. The coaches are definitely not talking about <laughs> it, but I know the players have it in the back of their heads. Win tonight would be the most wins in a single season for Nebraska in Big Ten Conference play. Only joined the conference in 2011. It would be their 18th conference win if they get it tonight. Becky comes right back. It was like a pinball machine right there. And both of these teams are starting in the same rotations they started in, in set one and set two. Minnesota's gonna challenge and look at the pancake. So start of the third. See if Justine Wong Rant has got her hand under this ball. Looks like she might have. It's tough. I think it's tough to tell on that. But it looks like her hand, at least. So the point is to Minnesota from the angle we were looking at. It didn't seem that clear to have that quick a call. That was a quick call. That was the quickest call that we've seen. That we've seen, I think, all year. Oddly, considering it looked like the hand was... And the first point. But we don't see all the angles that we are available to the officials. So, one challenge remaining for Minnesota. And they get the first point of the third. And the second block of the night for the Gophers. Oh, it's great serving. And what Samantha is trying to do is take Brianna Holman out of the equation. She's serving short. And Brianna, she doesn't want to pass at all, so it forces Justine to come up, pass that ball, and Holman, take it. Holman does pass this time, and Fecky has the point. And those are the adjustments. So we talk about it beforehand, but that's the adjustment that Nebraska's making. Automatically, I'm sure Juan around to set. Holman, you take that ball. I'm going to stay back and get the deep serve. Speaking of adjustments, that's what Hugh McCutcheon said would be key to this match. How you adjust within the match, your strategy as a coach, and we'll see how the Gophers have adapted. Page tap terminates. Three-point pass by Rosado. Again, it doesn't, it looks like it doesn't take much. Serve-receive is very difficult at all levels. I watch club volleyball all the time, high school ball, and serve-receive is is hard for those players at the young age and, and it takes a lot of training for these passers day in and day out to perfect it. Katie Rolfson off of the block. Her sixth kill of the night. She's just finding it there. She does a nice job of finding the outside hand or that seam and tools the block. Gophers out of system off the serve from Justin Wong. 
Francis, but an out system kill for Alexis Hart. It was a nice leaner right there. I like to call those leaning hits where she's going in. Hart uses her whole body, very patient, takes her time and goes outside the block and just kisses the edge. there from Maloney and a nice tip from Katie Rolson great tip and you'll see Katie do that she'll hit a line she'll hit across court and the next play out of nowhere she's tipping the ball right over the blocker she has such great range really mixes it up that's what makes her such a high level pin hitter a tough serve from Nebraska off the tape and out of play And Justine was right there. This is what amazes me about her. She is all over the court. She reads it so well, and she does stay on her feet quite often. Serving game from Nebraska, dictating things here in the third. And that's what happens with this team. Nebraska relies heavily on their serve, which forces a great block and defensive plays for their team. We always talk about how the ace numbers don't tell the whole story. Some of the points that are created off a tough serve. And here, Seliger Swenson on the run again. At a point that you could say did start with the serve. Well, they're going to go after Alexis Hart. She's a freshman. She's not a main passer in this rotation. They pull her back, but they're really going after her. They want her to think about passing and the attack. Aggressive serving from the Huskers and Katie Ralston, and they're up in the third. Michaela Fecky has led the way for the Huskers in this match. Nine kills on 22 attacks, hitting 364. And she has Nebraska up in this match 2-0 and leading in the third. She's got a great first step. She really attacks high with that huge snap up there, and she brings the heat. Fecky, we mentioned at the start of the broadcast, loves the big matches to show up on the biggest stage, and she has done that in this one. But out of the timeout, Big kill there for Hannah Tapp. And Hannah Tapp, you'll see her hit out in the middle, but she also likes to go behind the setter. So if you were in Nebraska, you got to keep your eyes on her locked in and making sure you know what, what angle she's going to go for, what attack she's going to go for in each rotation. Coverage from Wong Arantes. Malloy. Out of play, no touch call. Malloy's got an interesting swing. A lot of times her feet aren't getting all the way to the ball, so she hits outside her body line. So when you're lining up, you may not line up correctly on her. So she gets away with a lot of tough swings, scrappy swings that score. Amber Olsen down the line. Very solid. Fourth kill for Amber Ralston. She's also got five blocks. And Rosado's got her left foot on that line and went right over her head. It's the eighth service error, though, for Nebraska. Of the match, it's really the only area that they have struggled tonight. But they've also added a lot of aces in there, too. And they've taken Minnesota out of their element. So their serve, on another hand, Mike, is working. So this went to the will height, another chance. Rosado again is there. Hunter sets Becky. Good up by Hart, but a long run for Seliger Swenson. Albright out of the back row. And the timing is good for Albright. Just waiting for her moment to swing. Nice dig up there by Juan Arantes. And Kelly Hunter's got a lot of options. Even though she's about the eight-foot line, she's got a lot of options out there. 21st kill of the season, Veronica Albright. She's shown her ability to swing throughout her career. That went into the bottom of the net. That's a third time now for Sydney Ta Townsend. That's hard. You know, the spotlight is on somebody like her, especially after she maybe misses her first serve. 
everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen. And that's a tough, tough thing when you come off the bench and your job is to go in and serve and you don't get it done. Becky with a great approach and finish. And I love how she's pointing to her teammates, say, great pass, great set. You know, this is a total team effort. It's not just me out there getting the point. It takes a lot for it to get done. So great job by Becky acknowledging her teammates. Becky in double figures. Huskers continuing to play it off the net, but they don't get it over before four contacts. We're tied at nine. Minnesota can get those scrappy points. We've seen that happen time in and time again. I mean, just their five setters against Michigan State and Michigan, they're very scrappy, and they're able to pull together a bunch of points with plays like that. Home in the hammer again. Huge, and that is not a fast ball it kind of hangs in the air a little bit she puts a lot of power on it keeps the ball in front of her you'll see Loman's right in front of her and so is Paige Tamp but she takes the lesser area so she goes up and hits hard towards that left back side back to that great first contact and pass from Monica Albert not a good first contact for the Gophers and Lohman converts. And that was really important for Minnesota to get somebody else involved in the offense. With those out-of-system plays, they're going to their left side pin an awful lot. So to be able to spread it open and give some love to Lohman up there is huge. Malloy tools the block. You know, it's got to be so frustrating for Minnesota to block somebody like Andy Malloy because she just goes up there and swings hard, cross body. Looks like she's going to hit cross court, but then turns it at the last second and hits line and gets that tool. Another chance for Loman and another finish. And it was set up by a great pass. This game can be very easy if you have good passers on the other side. And you've got Sarah Wilhite back there, six rotation player. She's somebody that, you know, you look at and she's doing it all for this team. And 68 attempts against Michigan, and she's got to play in the backcourt. Katie Ralston does it all for her team as well as she tools off the block. And the 12-11 lead, we saw her go on a serving run earlier. can't get to that ball to kill for Hannah Tech. And they're using the middles more. And that will happen with those good passes, something that Minnesota is used to. That's their bread and butter. Samantha likes to run that offense, get that ball in kind of her zone, and she wants options up there. It's not going to work if she's forced to set the ball to the pin all the time. and out of the back row. And it was huge, and they're going to find her no matter what. Will Hyde on the other side, Katie Rolfson on this side, very nonchalantly going up there for that back row attack, and that's a fastball. That's almost like an in-system bit. That's a back row attack that oftentimes the men's team, the men's game, uses to score points. And we're seeing it more in the women's game. Becky! Nebraska sure is getting those kills, aren't they? This is a tight third set, but yet it feels like Nebraska has really been able to assert their will. I mean, I think it's because of the first contact. It's so clean. And the ace for Albright as it trickles over the tape. That's a tough ball. It's a, it's a dirty ace where it really hits the net, and you can't react to it. lead for Nebraska. Huskers hitting 474 in this third set. Now with the five aces that you saw, Nebraska has won 18 straight sets. 
dates back to that five set match on November 4th at Penn State and a good response that Minnesota needed. It was. She went against the grain. So Samantha pulled up. The set was really far in front of her, more towards the left side of the court, and she was able to wing it back all the way for that side attack. Get by Juan Arantes. Block is there for the Gophers. It was, because it was an out-of-system play. Minnesota was ready and waiting. Very disciplined block. They're used to getting so many more blocks in this match. Really low numbers for them in that department. But Hannah Tapp really reaches high and presses into the court. Back-to-back -back points for the Gophers, bringing a little bit more life back in this building. Great dig by Rosado. And mistiming the jump, Amber Rolfson, we're tied. That's huge, and that really gets the fans involved in this arena. You got Rosado doing a nice job of just lining up outside of Samantha's left arm. I'm sorry, yes, yeah, Samantha's left arm does a nice job of getting that ball up nice and high. 12 digs for Dalian Liz Rosado, and Minnesota has tied the third set at 15. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups, stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. DN is presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. And by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Gopher fans hoping to get this team rolling here in the third, tied at 15. They're down two sets to zero in this matchup of number one against number two. With the tip. And a tap. Nice transition by Minnesota. Again, just getting the middles involved in something I'm sure they talked about. Not enough production out of that area of the court. And Samantha does a nice job of pushing her middles, really pumping them from the 8-foot line, 10-foot line. She can give them the ball. 4-0 run for the Gophers, ended by Amber Rolfson. Low set all the way out to the right side. Pin, so the block is not ready and waiting for her. But Kelly Hunter does, does a nice job distributing it. Sarah Wilhite is in left side of the court. About this being the first Big Ten Conference matchup ever of number one versus number two, second of the year for Nebraska. And there, the stuff for the Huskers. They beat Texas in straight sets when they were number one early in the season when Nebraska was number one and Texas was number two. And they're trying to repeat that effort here on the road in the sports pavilion, but it's been tight in every set. Huskers, though, with the one point lead and keeping the Gophers out of system again. Home. Tap on the slot. Becky. Rolson kept it off the floor. Great get for Amber Rolson. But down the line, Hannah Tap comes through. She sure did. And again, Samantha's in the front row, so there's only two attackers up there. So Hannah Tap has got to work so hard going back from the middle of the court all the way out to the right in each of those plays. Holman looking to respond, but an attack error, and the Gophers have the lead. We've had 11 ties so far in this set, but now... Minnesota with the 18 to 17 lead. And Rosado just has to keep the pressure on in the serving line. She does, and the Oscars are out of system. Albright will set over to Fecky. Will height the 
kill. And this is Minnesota volleyball to a T. You've got Gaynor back there keeping the ball alive with high hands. And Sarah Wilhite, even though she's off, off balance right there, really expected that set to be a little bit more inside. She reaches hard and goes for the kill. And the air, Nebraska with a good decision to let it go. It was close. But a nice run, nonetheless, on the service line from Rosado. And that ball was floating up there. It was a great serve and made Nebraska decide whether or not they were going to go for that ball. That'll be Hunter serving for Nebraska. Hunter with the dig. Katie Rolfson, the finish. Katie Rolfson, the finish. How about the assist by Justy Juanarantes, former setter. Back in the day, she delivers a perfect <laughs> ball. Right there, lifts up that foot so she's not called as the libero setting in front of the template line. Great get there by Justine Wong. Arantes and the point. The credit to the points will go to the attackers, but Justine Wong Arantes make the plays all over as she usually does. Well, she does all the right things. She's in the right place, and it's a lot of anticipation, something you have to learn at a young age, and I think it has a lot to do with her beach career. I really do. There's two people on the sand covering the whole court, and she grew up playing in the sand. She knows how to read the attackers so well, and all she did is transfer that onto the hard court. And a lot of times, you know, these attackers from Nebraska, they will find ways on the court because of maybe they were able to play sand. And I, I hate to give that much credit to the sand game. I love it. I think it's really important. Uh, it's really making progress, I think. But Justine is a huge example of somebody that's taken advantage of that and is really shy. 19 digs in this one for Justine Longarantis. A school record of 35 digs the first time these two teams met. Hugh McCutcheon and some words to his team. This is only a one-point deficit. If they can take the third, they know they're alive in this match. They know they can send this potentially to a decisive fifth set. This is a preview of what we expect from the NCAA tournament. In a regional, maybe the NCAA tournament semifinal or championship in Nebraska, 17 and 1. They win tonight, they get a share of the Big Ten title and can go after an outright Big Ten title. Minnesota with a win. If they came back and sent this to five sets, they could beat Nebraska tonight and then have to beat Wisconsin and get a little bit of help to get a share of the Big Ten title. Still a possibility. You're going to be saying this in your sleep tonight, Mike. <laughs> Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Nebraska, they have been the three teams that have lingered at the top of the rankings all year long. And we have seen some great volleyball from them throughout the Big Ten season. Hunter. Holman. Defensively, I saw Minnesota scramble at the last second. Samantha's up there with her two strong hitters, Sarah Wilhite, in this rotation and tap. 4 0 run with Kelly Hunter on the service line for Nebraska. Again, the Gophers are out of system. And the block! You now it's really Nine tough blocks. to do it all. Yep, and Sarah Wilhite is taking that deep serve. They did a nice job of picking on her because they know she's back there serve receiving, but also has to take that big swing. Nine to three edge in blocks for Nebraska. 5-0 run. Will Height though ends the run. And she does, she answers well, and somebody else was able to take that pass. Some pressure off of her. Minnesota is going to turn around this third set. It needs to come from the service line because the passing has been so good for Nebraska in the third. Katie Rolfson and Nebraska two points away from winning this match. Really hard to defend off of the three-point pass against a team like Nebraska, number one in the country. On a three-point pass, they're going to get that kill. Ten kills for Katie Rolfson.
Seliger Swenson unconventional the point for Minnesota as their center Seliger Swenson just barely got that ball up and not a great swing but still the point well, it was a great effort by Samantha. Very smart play by Loman. She saw that Becky's back there, and Becky doesn't play defense. She serves, and then she has to play defense. So they did a nice job of targeting her. The pass to Kelly Hunter. But the block that the Gophers had to have. Loman's got that huge smile on her face. She read it well. She trusts her training to get all the way out there to the pin and press over. Holman, Rosado with the up. Hard to swing, net violation on Nebraska, and we're tied. Well, here we go. Minnesota finds a way to creep back, and Alexis Hart did a nice job of getting that ball out of the net. Samantha kind of trapped her there, and then she was able to get a big swing the second time around. 13th tie of the third. John Cook is up and talking with the down official. Miscommunication for the Oscars. No worse for the wear except for the block. And it's set point, Minnesota. I'm pulling my hair out right now. This is so great. Great volleyball. And I'm really surprised they gave a nice, easy serve to Justin Wangarantes, but it's almost like Nebraska didn't react the way they should have reacted with some authority, maybe hitting high hands, Katie Rolfson, or just the coverage ball. Just happened to be too slow. Kelly Hunter's right there, not expecting it. A couple of blocks here at the end of this third set. Crucial for the Gophers. Nebraska has won 18 straight sets. Minnesota, this 4-0 run with another point can end that run. Last time that Nebraska lost a set was in set four on November 4th to Penn State. I know how easily we could be headed to extra points as well. John Cook talking with his team, Minnesota, these 5,000 fans. Hoping to have a reason to celebrate at the end of the third and keep this night going. See this one go all, in. All, all the time and I'm just watching right now their body language as these teams come out onto the court Nebraska a little slow walking back to where they need to go maybe disappointment on their face Minnesota's got a little skip to their step getting out to the court feeling a little bit better about themselves in the set Sarah Wilhite on the service line Hunter Holman the block and we're tied. I think off the block, off the head. <laughs> Nine kills, excuse me, now ten for Brianna Holman. Third Husker in double figures. We go to extra points in the third set. The ace from Justine Wong around us. It's match point for Nebraska. Look at this serve. Justine very confident back there. See that ball float. It looks like it's going right in the midline of Sarah Wilhite, and then at the last second, takes a sharp turn. Minnesota, though, still alive. That's where you have to have those long nails for Molly Bowman to really reach up on her off play. Look at her extend all the way. Modded up at 25 apiece. Paige Tapp serving for the Gophers. Amber Rolson is stuffed 
and Minnesota will have another shot at set point. It's almost like they're not expecting Minnesota to block, because guess what happened in the beginning of this match? Minnesota wasn't blocking, so they didn't have to cover much. And here we are, the game of rhythm, and come back, Minnesota's blocking. 10-foot line for Hunter. Katie Rolfson, Terman hates, and we're tied again. And she was off. I mean, she was about the 8-foot line taking a hard swing and really going after it. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to end at these final points on a tip. You want to go hard, swing hard. Hunt. There's a hard swing from her and again. The third set point upcoming for Minnesota. Three-point pass, Samantha delivers a nice ball. That is two quick tempos up there. Hard to decide if you're Nebraska who you're going to block. Ten kills now for Alexis Hart. Hunter goes to Amber Rolfson. Almost the block to end it. Doesn't make it over the tape. That will do it for the third. And we're headed to set four. Huge comeback for Minnesota just to fight their way. And it, it all comes down to blocking at the very end. Look at Alexis Hart right there. Really press into the court. Great job by Minnesota. The block from the Gophers. And they win the third. We'll be back for the fourth. Minnesota has won 30 straight matches in the sports pavilion. The last time that they lost was back in 2014, October 22nd, when Nebraska came back from an 0-2 deficit thanks to the play of Kelsey Fien, who had 14 kills and would go on to average double figures for the rest of the Big Ten season after that. That was the last time that Minnesota lost at home. They were 15-0 a year ago, 11-0 this year. They just ended Nebraska's 18 consecutive sets, one streak. They're trying to get this to a decisive fifth set. Three of the last four times these two teams have played, it's gone five. Eight of the last 13 overall have also gone to five sets. The Gophers feeling it now to start the fourth. Well, their bench is feeling it for sure, and they keep them involved, and they know how to scrap and fight their way back. Even in those deficits, it's huge for Minnesota to just trust their own training and work and just point for point, just really grind. Loman, again, with just that fingertip touch. Will Hunt. Again, her first step is so fast. That tempo ball all the way out to the pin. She doesn't have to get all the way back in transition. She knows it's going to come fast, so she has to make sure she's going in the direction of the ball and release as soon as Samantha has it in her hands. Overpass off the serve from Will Height, and an easy one for the Gophers. A great serve. She's the one that created that opportunity for Lohman. We don't see it that often against these two teams. They're so strong in the serve-receive department. Minnesota carrying over the energy for that third set win. Good start here in the fourth. Rosado the up. Off the block, tooling his heart. Go up strong and go bang away. Go after it. Don't think too much. As a freshman, you just want to go up there, be athletic as much as you can, and go after those elbows. to see happen in the beginning if it's your team but if you're making headway if you're touching balls in the beginning of a match maybe not blocking them eventually those are going to turn into stuff balls. and a mistake that time out of play by nebraska it's all minnesota so far in the fourth Becky right now has nowhere to go with that ball as she's trapped. It's really tight to the pin. And if you broad jump, that's a hard ball to get. So Kelly Hunter right now, 
I'm sure is getting taunt too from her coaches. Drastic turnaround here in the fourth set. Minnesota up 5-0. Gophers off to the hot start in the fourth set. Will Height serving for Minnesota. This will help them win the third. Katie Rolfson, first point of the fourth. Huskers get it from Rolfson. And they needed to get out of that rotation. Rotation one is tough because you have Becky, your left side hitter, on the right side of the court, and Katie Rolfson on the left side of the court, which she traditionally is on the right side. Does that make sense? You get all that? <laughs> Becky now back to serve. And Seliger Swenson off the net. And the air there from Malloy. Now 20 attack airs for Nebraska, third of the fourth set. And she's getting some advice, some instruction from Justine Wangarantis, and she takes it. I love how she's nodding her head saying, yeah, I got this, I got this. Give me the ball. And the swing cross court will go down for Rawson. Swinging away, Katie, on the left side now, on the right side. Somebody that they're going to go to in situations like this, where they're down. How do we get points? How do we get a side out? And they're going to find Katie. 14 kills for Katie Rawlson, hitting 355. Big difference from when this team's first match. She had nine kills and eight airs. There's Hannah Tapp for the Gophers. Nice pass, and Samantha's able to pump her middles. Hannah Tapp has done a nice job of finding space, so she's able to swing away off of those service plays. First contact's always so important. Seven kills now for Hannah Tapp. Good get there by Will Hunt. <laughs> Malloy off the set from Rolfs and another get from Sarah Will Hunt. First long rally to fourth. Long Arantis looking for the dig, but there's going to be a net violation on the Huskers. Wow, I'm just watching Hart on the other side right here. Good effort by Will Height, but look at Hart right here. Really does a nice job of focusing in on that left side of the court and swings away. Largest Minnesota lead of the night. Will Height in the back row. Seliger Swenson gets to it, but a free ball chance. No, the roll shot will fall. I mean, Will Height is second on her team in digs, and here's why. She positions herself just so she's able to take either a step to her right or to her left to get the ball up. And she's got the long limb, so her range back there is pretty good. She's able to get those balls up when they're outside of her body line. 15 digs for Sarah Will Height. And the Gophers up 9-2 to two in the fourth, trying to send this to a decisive fifth set. First time these two teams met, it went five. Hell out in the sports pavilion to watch number one versus number two. It's like we're watching two different matches now, because early on, it was a tight one, but then Nebraska took control in sets two and in set three. They had the lead before Minnesota went on the run. And the Gophers showing why they are the number two team in the nation by challenging Nebraska and not letting them take this in straight sets. Well, right off the get-go, they score five points. So we haven't seen this all night where right out of the gate they're doing this. And the adjustments that they're making, I think, Minnesota right now in the blocking department, in the fast transition game, Samantha's able to spread the offense a little bit more. I think Nebraska has really slowed down. I think they started watching a little too much instead of reacting and anticipating. Got away from their game plan. I think the discipline needs to come back for Nebraska. They need to clean it up.
up a little bit, especially on that first contact. But altogether, both of them are such quality teams. Look for Nebraska to really score some more points right now. Coming up after volleyball, if you're looking for a Thanksgiving icebreaker, watch Sports Light with Mike Hall. Join Mike every Wednesday at 11 Eastern, and that will come right after the conclusion of our match. If you tuned in for Sports Light, stay tuned, watch some great volleyball, and then watch Mike Hall on Sports Light right after the conclusion of this match. Minnesota with a 9-2 lead in the fourth. About the change and the blocking, the serving game has been better for Minnesota. We'll see how the Huskers respond. Hunter at the 10-foot line and tooling off the block is Katie Rolfson. And great set by Kelly Hunter again. Just smooth, nice transition play all the way over to the right side of the court, just going against the grain. And I'm really impressed with Kenzie Maloney getting that pass off too. Good first contact for the Gophers and the point to Nebraska. Great serve for Nebraska just to get them out of their element, kind of slow them down. Katie Rolfson has been great serving throughout this match. Two aces for her and a few other points that have been created off her serves that don't go down as an ace. Hunter. Will Height with the power out of the back row. And a whistle for contacts on the Huskers. What heat from Sarah Will Height. a lot of heat. I love her coming out of the back row. Great hustle play by Rosado, but there's Will Height. Just as a nice outlet for a front row setter that you've got Sarah Will Height back there ready to score at any time. A double for Will Height now with 10 kills, 15 digs. 10 double doubles on the season for her. Coverage from Ronda Rogers. Malloy converts for the Huskers. I like when Malloy swings away. When she tries to take something off of it, it falls right into the belly of the block. So she needs to keep swinging. And the people behind her, Kenzie Maloney, Justin Wong, Arantes, they're telling her what spots are open. Swenson back to Will Hunt. Albright the dig. Becky the swing. Another lengthy rally between these two. At the net, it's won by the Gophers. It was like the third or fourth rally that we've had, and I believe Minnesota has won almost all of them. And what they do so well, you see Hannah Tap up there just moving along the net, having that physical up there just in case of an overpass she's able to put that ball down Tough serve from Rosado real height off the bump set out of play no they'll say there was a touch call Oscar staff had a good look at it, so it doesn't look like they're going to go for the green card. I was kind of waiting around, seeing if that was going to come out. Seven-point lead for Minnesota. Hunter and Barolson. Kelly Hunter did a nice give-and-go. Made it look like she was going to form some kind of an attack and then send it back behind her head. You see right here, kind of a double pump. And was able to create some space for her hitter. Townsend keeps this one in after three surface errors we've seen from her so far. Real height. With authority, too. Sometimes she's just gathering up and getting a two-step on that ball and is able to do something with it. I love how they keep going back to her and she finds a way just outside of Coleman's left arm. Number 
numbers for Wilhite really coming alive as this match has gone on. And miscommunication, bad communication from the Huskers to let that go. I think they need to pull together right now, and this is where their captain, Kelly Hunter, their setter, needs to make some adjustments. She needs to pull her team together and talk to them a little bit and run a cleaner offense, but it does start with the pass. Not a good connection there for Minnesota this time, so Huskers get one back. So it can be contagious on both sides of the net. But you definitely don't see it that often from a team like Nebraska where the ball drops between two players. Minnesota hitting over 400 in this fourth set. Huskers hitting at 125. Wilhite has been brilliant as of late. Page 10. Well, they're getting that defensive balls right up to Samantha Seliger Swenson around the five foot line. So perfect opportunity to run whatever she wants to run. She does a nice job of looking at the block, seeing what's open. Rosado gets a piece of that ball, comes back over. Holman off the block and down. And just finds it. Good transition play, something they need more out of. Holman, she was alive and kicking uh, in the last set. Early on in the last set, we saw a lot of action out of her. And she does a nice job challenging and hitting against a double block. Holman in double figures for the eighth time this season. The second time against Minnesota. Oh, and has got to that ball. Rolfs off the block, and Rosado can't get to it. Nebraska's going to mount a comeback. Needs to start now. It sure does. They need to string together some points. The side-out game is great as long as you're back-to-back, -back, but they started with such a deficit. They're going to need to find a way to keep their teammates on the serving line for a long period of time. Katie Wilson leading all players with 16 kills and seven digs. A couple of aces, three blocks for her as well. And there's another ace for Nebraska. No, their serves are falling short, which is so cool to see. It's hard to gauge right here. But look at this. The ball's got some spin, and it drops right over the net. Seven aces and Kenzie Maloney getting into the ace game for Nebraska. And then Hart responds off the block. And out of system. Good to see by Alexis Hart swinging away when the ball is not perfect. Team kill for Alexis Hart. Hart once more of it into the tape. Now for Nebraska, you have to think back to the second set. It was a similar margin when they came back to win the second set and take the 2-0 lead. So despite the fact they have been down for the entire fourth set, I know this team for the Huskers is confident. They can come back in this one, and Salinger went it well off the net. Can't dig that ball up. Well, she was down the line and she delivered a nice ball, but Kelly Hunter has to come flying out from right back to get that ball. But here is Hannah Tab. Nice high snap. And unfortunately for Nebraska, Kelly Hunter can't get there fast enough. Seventeen to eleven lead for Minnesota. Malloy with the attack air and the Gophers closing in on forcing a decisive fifth set. You think about Minnesota; they're three and three and five setters this year. Lost one five setter on the road in Lincoln, but they played the last two matches at. Home. They both fall into five sets. They beat Michigan State 18 to 16 in the fifth, and they beat Michigan 15 to 13 in the fifth. And they would love to make it back to back to back five set victories. Hart looking 
looking for that corner. She did not get it. She was trying hard for that. For sure, she saw that open court. The defense on Nebraska was really sucked in, pinched into the middle of the court. Sullivan swipes in the dump. She knew what was open. Olivia Bender's up there as a left side blocker. Somebody straight off the bench. Her job is to kind of capitalize, get on top of Samantha. See Amber Rolfs and her arms are down. As a middle blocker, when you have a setter up there, you want to make sure they're nice and high. You have a presence up there. Oscar's out of system. Boomer, no, the swing and the kill. Nice job by her. As a role player coming off the bench, getting a kill, finding a way for her team to score some points. out of system will hike the swing another chance and this time she terminates and that's just it Mike another chance I've heard that so much tonight and that's what Minnesota is doing so well it's a second chance opportunities that they're scoring on they may not get it the first time but they do a nice job covering and they come back at you both teams have three players in double figures now. Will Height has 13. Hannah Tapp leads the Gophers with 14. Tip from Page Tap. Wong Arantis gets to it on the pancake. But an easy one put down for Page Tap and Minnesota four points away. And she's just up there waiting. But I'm watching Justine Wong Arantis. She's doing everything she can right now for her team. Getting every ball up that comes her way. I know she's hoping her teammates respond and do something with that second contact. 22 digs for Justine Wong Arantis, as you said, trying to do everything. Amber Rolfson, Albright, good job in the coverage. Wilhite down the line. What a performance by Sarah Wilhite in just about the last set and a half. I mean, she is one of those Player of the Year candidates. Like, we haven't talked about it tonight, but I'm looking at her as somebody that really brings it in all areas and somebody that the Big Ten looks at to, to honor a huge award like that. Hugh McCutcheon has said that she holds this whole team together, and you can see why with her performance in this crucial match. Becky with the power, and Shaw tried to give up her body to go for some. Couldn't do anything about that. Well, that's what Becky needs to do. She's got some job up there right now as a left side attacker, but that's a ball that she needs. Give her a little bit of space to work with. She can see the block, see the open court, and really put some heat on that ball. Townsend again keeping this serve in. Husker sticking with her. Paige Tap, though, has the kill for Minnesota. Off of that one foot, the Tap sisters both know how to deliver the slide, and one of their legacies will be the slide attack for both of them. Just really tracks it and pushes it in that seam. It's natural for a slide attacker to get those kills cross court. Short serve, and it goes out of play off Loman. one of those odd plays. <laughs> It'll be Hunter for the Huskers back to serve. Until the third set, Nebraska had won 18 consecutive sets played. Looks like they're about to drop their second consecutive set. Page tap gives the Gophers set point in the fourth. Wow, that was really a beautiful spike. I hate to say that like that, but wow, look at that. Long arms, textbook hit. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. Seliger Swenson, Loman gets a piece of it. Tip from Loman, the pancake from Justine Wangarantis. Gophers try and end it, they don't as Nebraska. 
will keep the force set alive. And Minnesota right now has nothing to lose, so they're just going to swing away as hard as they can. And Justine's back there just popping those balls up. For the Huskers. And Holman is right there. Something that she can do all night long. She does a nice job of tracking the ball with her eyes. Hip to hip and really closes the block and presses into the court. Tenth block for Nebraska, but a long way to go here in the fourth. If they're going to try to come back. Bump set. Hart with the tip. Chance for the freshman. And a whistle on the double contact. We're going to the fifth between number one and number two. Incredible volleyball right there. I'm just listening to the crowd and really getting into it. Number one versus number two for the first time in the regular season in Big Ten Conference history, and it has been better than we expected as we start the fifth set. And what do you know, a couple of overtime games when you consider one versus two throughout all of college athletics, some of the recent number ones versus number two that you will see, and we have a great one here between Nebraska and Minnesota and Sarah Wilhite. She came alive at the end of the third set, carried it over into the fourth with her defense, with her kills and serve. Well, and I think her teammates really pumped her up. They were able to deliver a better ball to Samantha, who in turn gave her a better set. So a total team effort, but Sarah Wilhite really is a rock for this team. Sarah Wilhite talked about when she joined this program, she really only had one shot. She could hammer the ball across court. She didn't realize how much she needed to develop in her freshman season. She felt like she put a lot of pressure on herself. Now she's come out, forgotten about the pressure, just thought about playing and enjoying the opportunity and she's taken full advantage of it as she has the first point of the fifth. She is and we'll continue to talk about her but last time, you know, last year at this time all we were talking about is Dolly Santana as an, a strong outside hitter from Minnesota and she was end up being player of the year and all that and she was great but here we go again another outside hitter for Minnesota. Race to 15 points in the fifth and Minnesota has the first two. And these two teams met October 23rd in Lincoln in the fifth. Nebraska won it 15 to 8. They hit 316 as a team in the fifth, while Minnesota hit negative. Will Height was there for the dig. Hart had to try to get it with her left hand, the first point of the fifth for Nebraska now. And there you have Becky right there getting the job done on the right side, doing a nice job blocking with Holman. And Becky is only up there in the front court. She's not back there at all playing defense, and they have somebody else coming in to serve for her, Kenzie Maloney. Four of the last five matches have gone five sets. And the service air, the tenth of the night for Nebraska. Everything is magnified in the fifth. It is, and that's not th nothing new for Nebraska. They have missed a lot of serves before. And really, right now, they're worried about their efficiency. So their side-out percentage needs to be high in this fifth set. Just going to send over a free ball. Roman! Minnesota was two points away from being swept. And here they are in the fifth with a 4-1 lead. And that's the momentum shift that you see in this high-level game. And really, it's Nebraska just, you know, you can't feel sorry for yourself out there. You've got to fight and find a way to compete. And I'm sure their coaches were talking to them about those issues. Malloy with the roll shot. 
Seliger swings him from her knees. Good job by Maloney to get to that ball. The block for the Gophers. It goes out of play. The point to Nebraska. Great assist by Justine. Nice high ball, giving her teammate a chance to get a good swing on it. And that's all you can ask for for an out-of-system play. Minnesota is looking for their second victory over a number one team this season. They beat Wisconsin on the road in Madison. Trying to win it here at home. Long around just can't get to it. And a 5-2 lead for the Gophers. Moment was just on fire in the front row there. Did everything she could for her team. Touching balls on the block, but swinging away and finding points for Minnesota. Three kills so far in the fifth on five attacks for the Gophers. Chaucer, part of that senior class. They'll be honored this weekend. Great defense on both sides. Laying out was Maloney. Here's Malone. Rosado, what a save! Rally, Andy Malloy with the kill for the Huskers. And boy, Nebraska really needed that. Great defense by the Liberos on both sides of the net. And they just feed off of each other. They stay real composed. But in the end, it's Andy Malloy, wrist away shot, finding a spot on the court. Fans in the sports pavilion showing their appreciation for this high level of volleyball between number one and number two. Straight down. No chance for coverage at all on that ball. She slowed down her approach, her swing a little bit, realized that she was hitting right into a solid block. If you don't see light and you just see shadows, you've got to make sure you find a way around it. Hart almost got a block there for the go for the Huskers, I mean, and then they come back and they tie it at five. And I love Hunter's move on that play. As a front row setter right there, she just steps up her fist up there and makes a good play. Look at her reach and finds a tip over the net. Great play by Kelly Hunter. But go back to Annie Malloy. She had that kill followed by a block. She was hitting zero coming into the fifth set. Nine kills and nine airs. But she's made plays on two huge points as Nebraska has come back here with three consecutive tallies. And she's had to fight her way back into the lineup. They put Bender in there uh, to do something because she wasn't producing. So if you're on the bench and you're looking out at your teammates and they're struggling, you want to be out there. What can you do to make it better for your team? And I'm sure she had a nice spark in this set to do something and find some production, finding the court in those kills. Exactly what we hope for tonight between these two teams and again setting up the possibilities for the NCAA tournament but what is at stake Nebraska if they can win this fifth set they get a share of the Big Ten title for the first time since 2011 their first year in the Big Ten Conference if Minnesota gets the win they can win tonight potentially beat Wisconsin on Saturday and they would need help from Michigan to beat Nebraska in Lincoln to potentially get a share of the Big Ten title for the second consecutive year. They won it outright a year ago. For the Gophers, 30 straight wins at home, trying to make it 31. Well, Nebraska's, Nebraska's going to do something about that, I'm sure. And here's Katie Robson doing a nice job at the serving. Justine Wong Arantes tried to play it, but the point goes down for the Gophers. Hannah Tab is all over that ball. Here you see her. Nice block. Really eyes it the whole way into her hand. She doesn't take her eyes off the ball at all when she blocks. She does a nice job of watching it come in, and then she presses over the net.
Rosado with the dig. Will Hunt. What a night for Sarah Will Hunt. 16 kills and 25 digs. A career high in digs. But big play after big play from the Gopher senior. Well, look at this. Out of system right here. Just finds a way. Looks like she's hitting cross court. Turns it at the last second and hits line. 7 5 lead and a timeout with the Gophers. Trying to beat Nebraska. Only one team has defeated the Huskers this season. That was Ohio State on October 1st. And a loss in the Devaney Center in Lincoln. Buckeyes have the Huskers number in Lincoln, Nebraska. For some reason, Ohio State has found a way to win three consecutive matches in Lincoln. But right now, Nebraska, just a two-point deficit. Haven't played the way they did earlier in the match, but trying to look for some of their seniors and this 2013 recruiting class who's come through time after time. Come through in another big moment here in the fifth. Look at what we have seen so far in the fifth set. Bowman getting involved, and of course, Sarah Wilhite. The Huskers, Malloy, making some big plays. Huge efforts by both sides of the net. But I love Minnesota right here. You got Sarah Wilhite finding the line shot and the big point for the Gophers. Liz, you talked about the case for player of the year, and obviously both these teams want to focus on a victory, but a performance like the one we're seeing from Sarah Wilhite, that stands out when votes come in for Big Ten Conference Player of the Year. Well, when coaches are watching this, and when they're scouting against somebody like Minnesota, you know, whose name comes up all the time? And, and it's usually Sarah Wilhite. On the other side, for Nebraska, it might be somebody like Katie Rolfson, where you want to keep your eye on. Her name comes up in those scouting kind of reports. So that's kind of what I envision to happen in those voting. Great play by the Nebraska setter and Kelly Hunter. of the night for Hunter. And there's Annika Albright to serve. Will Hyde off the block. We will switch sides. She just has a lot of confidence up there. And Samantha's delivering the perfect ball for her. And you only have Hannah Tamp and Sarah Wilhite, so Nebraska knows where it's going. And you've got Kelly Hunter out there. She just unfortunately turns into or out towards the bench area. You want to make sure you're turning into the court. Remember, you could still see a challenge here, and not necessarily for that last point, but challenges are available. I believe that Minnesota has one remaining, Nebraska has two. And think back to the fifth set between Penn State and Nebraska in University Park. There was a challenge on the final point of that match that ended up going Nebraska's way, and you see the challenges left, so doesn't arm a team in any way to use their replay to potentially see even if it's just a little bit questionable either one of these coaching staffs decide to use the green card Minnesota in the driver's seat with the two-point lead in the fifth <laughs> Becky the stuff for the Gophers Watching Paige Tapp celebrate after that one. Nice job, good swing action, but look at her clothes. So Becky thought she had the clear away. You see Maddie Beal up there giving some seam, and at the last second, Paige turns it in. Gaynor got a hand on that ball. Free ball coming over for Nebraska. Hunter, good save by the Gophers but blocked at the net by Nebraska. And Amber Rolfson's up there. She's a force in the blocking department. It's a great defensive effort, but Paige Tapp cannot get that second ball up high enough for Maddie Beal to get a hand on it. Four blocks now for Kelly Hunter. Will Hyde cross court. 
that's such a fast ball going out to her. And again, if you're Nebraska, you have to know that ball is going to find its way to Sarah Wilhite. Brianna Holman almost gets all the way there. And in the seam, you see two defensive players trying to dig that. Again, that one is long. It was going to be a tough one off the bump set. First error in a while for Sarah Wilhite. Figures, just her fifth match this season in double figures. Almost the block, and then Katie Rolfson with some authority. With some authority, that's for sure. Do you see this nice pass? T tip option, Holman gets it up, and then snaps it down. I know Minnesota does not like that contact by Holman. I believe we have seen the green car, the last challenge from Minnesota. Your assessment, Liz? Well, it was a chicken arm, <laughs> but I don't know if that's what they can challenge right there. So I'd, I'd be curious to see what they're actually challenging. Percussion. So he's saying he wants it called as a double contact off of Holman. When you stick your elbow out, yes, sometimes it comes off your forearm and then hits your elbow, so maybe two contacts. And it appears that they will not allow Minnesota to challenge. for fans not happening. You usually hear that the ball doesn't lie while well, there was another call as Nebraska ended up in the net and the point goes to Minnesota. That ball does not lie. Sometimes you're right, Mike, especially in this game. This intensity of the points right here, 12-9. Malloy with the big swing for Nebraska. Hit that deep line and really caught that setter off guard. Samantha's back there digging, but she's got to go for it. Nice high hands outside her body. It was a strong hit. Again, looking like she's hitting cross court, turns it, and hits line. Great shot. Andy Malloy with three points in this fifth. And an overpass. The easy kill for Nebraska. It's a one-point fifth set. And the serving is so huge right now for Nebraska. Keeping the pressure on, Justine wong Arantes did a nice job and really forced that opportunity to happen for Nebraska. Twelve eleven lead for Minnesota in the fifth, but Nebraska rallying. I think this could be one that's decided in extra points as well. I don't know if I can stand it, Mike. Great showcase for the Big Ten Conference and two of the best teams nationally. Number one against number two. Again, this was a 23-21 lead in the third set for Nebraska. They were on their way to winning this match in straight sets and earning that share of the Big Ten title. It ended up being a 28-26 Minnesota win in the third. Gophers would dominate the fourth set, winning at 25-17. Both of these teams 
hitting just about 200. Minnesota on the match hitting 203. We mentioned that Nebraska has held their last 11 straight opponents coming into tonight under 180. So the Gophers outdoing that number. And again, we mentioned the setup and the scenarios. Nebraska wins. They are the Big Ten champions with at least a share of it. Win both, they get the outright Big Ten title. Wisconsin, there's a couple of options. They can get a share if they win out and Nebraska loses tonight, or if Nebraska loses both, they could get the outright, to outright title. Minnesota needs to win both matches, and Nebraska would have to lose in the regular season finale at home in the Devaney Center to Michigan for Minnesota to get a share of the Big Ten title. This doesn't happen that often in this level right now for the Big Ten Championship. So this is quite exciting. It's all that we could have hoped for and wanted in the final week of the regular season. Hannah Tech. Amber Robson, but it doesn't make it over the net. Just a little too low for Amber. She took a swing, a stab at it anyway, and really hit outside her body line. Maybe not the set that she would have preferred. Another timeout. With a 13 to 11 lead. And Liz, this is a preview that we talked about the entire night of potentially a Final Four matchup. You'd love to see this in the National Championship. You would. You would love it. I mean, all volleyball fans would. So let's make the plea to the committee. Put them on separate sides of the bracket and let them play and meet. Potential. I now also Wisconsin. Happen. Wisconsin would like to be on the other side of that bracket. There's so many quality Big Ten teams. We could have another year. You mentioned that there has been that trend of Big Ten teams in the national semifinal. For the last four years, there have been at least two Big Ten teams in the final four. We saw that 2013 matchup between Penn State and Wisconsin in the national championship. This is the best league in all collegiate volleyball. It's going to show that. We've seen it tonight, and we'll see it again in the postseason. But I'm sure any team that has to face these two teams in the first round, oh my gosh, they are watching tonight some of those uh, mid-major schools that won their conference tournament. Uh, my friend Ray Gooden down in Northern Illinois, I'm sure, is watching tonight because perhaps he would face one of these teams in the first round. Minnesota has only defeated Nebraska at home one time. And that came back in 2012. It was November 16th. You think back to that Gopher team, Tori Dixon, as well as Ashley Whitman, Catherine Harms involved. And Catherine Harms in the building tonight watching her former team trying to pull off this upset. She's been on the end line throughout the night. And they're two points away from taking the match and coming back from down 0-2 and on the brink of losing. And now, here they are, two points from winning the fifth. They were two points away from losing the match in the third. And what a reversal. Katie Shaw to serve for the Gophers. Rolfson gets the touch call. Gopher fans not happy with it. But it is the touch call for Nebraska. And there you see the blocking sub come in and out. Mandy Beal and Samantha Seliger Swenson. Big swing by Katie Rolfson. No challenge. And attack. Hunter. Gophers were there. Malloy, and we're tied. He got a, another green card, I believe, on this attack by Andy Malloy. I think they're challenging the fact that the antenna was hit. So it is the last challenge for Minnesota. Doesn't look like the antenna's moving. Thing to look at right now. Let's see if we get a better angle. We need to get it closer over there. 
does not appear the antenna, antenna moves. You know, I'm looking at the Katie Shaw back there, right back position, yelling, telling her coaches that the antenna was hit, but it might have been the block after the attack where they could have, you know, hit the antenna. I mean, I'm digging I mean, here, Mike. I'm it digging. didn't look like there was any movement from the antenna. It didn't. It didn't. Before look. or after the block came down. Not at all. Not from our angle, not what we can see. Again, the officials don't always see the same angles that we do. Still taking a look at it. This looks like a very good angle to see that the antenna is not moving. It doesn't look like it was hit enough to see. Which again, if this call was going to be overturned, you would need a definitive sign of a movement of the antenna. Yes, for sure. Off of Minnesota, no antenna hit, so we're tied at 13. Again, good reason to try it. Why not? You have the challenge. It can't hurt you. And Hugh McCutcheon uses his final challenge. Nebraska has two more. And of course, this needed to be decided by just the two-point margin. Gophers have match point upcoming. Great set by Samantha going against the grain. The ball was pushed up, and she sent it all the way back to her friend Hannah Tapp, who has been hitting that shot all night long. The freshman heart on the service line, trying to win it for the Gophers. What a service there. We go to extra points. I'm holding my breath, Mike. <laughs> that decision from Hugh McCutcheon to leave the freshman on the back line in oh, that key sure. moment. Definitely, definitely. Monica Albright for Nebraska. does not want. They do not want Kelly Hunter up there against Sarah Wilhite. She's finding that seam. Kelly Hunter's going up really skinny with her arms and her hands and just creating enough space for Sarah Wilhite to find that kill. Rosado to serve. Second match point for the Gophers. Hunter. Great opportunity for Minnesota. The block, though. Nebraska and Becky. What a stop. There was a huge block by Michaela Becky out there. I'm sure she was disappointed in her attack, but boy, what she does in return is deliver a stuff block. Huge. Minnesota bench was ready to explode. Townsend, another service air. Holman block is there for the Gophers. The whistle. Minnesota climbs back from the break to upset number one.
What a match tonight between number one and number two as the Gophers upset Nebraska. They trailed 23-21 in the third and looked like they were going to be swept. And they found a way to win this one tonight and pull off an unforgettable upset. Minnesota has won 31 straight at home. Unbeaten, they will get a chance at the Badgers on Saturday. And their hopes for a share of the Big Ten title still alive. What a night. Up next, Sports Light with Mike Hall. The Gophers come back from down 0-2 to beat number one Nebraska. That'll do it for us. Congratulations to the Gophers and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you.